In this screencast, we're going to address a really important question. It's only going to be the first of two parts of attempting to address this question. And in this screencast, we are going to answer the question, what is philosophy? Partly. We're going to do so by looking at the fields of study that classically are considered to be parts of philosophy, and then how and why philosophy is going to be important, particularly to this class, because ethics is a part of philosophy. We'll talk a little bit about all of that along the way, but it's basically just going to be an introduction so you get an idea, a starting point from which we can springboard, hopefully, to some deeper, um, more in-depth discussion. So let's get rolling. Philosophy. First and foremost, where should we go at all times for the ultimate answers to all questions? Wikipedia. That is not true, but in this case it works really well. Wikipedia sometimes can be really wrong, but it's a really great starting point almost always to figure out a general idea of things. So this is a really conventional popular definition as evidenced by it being in Wikipedia. Philosophy is the systematized study of general and fundamental questions, such as those about existence, reason, knowledge, values, mind, and language. Such questions are often posed as problems to be studied or resolved. That's a really great account of what philosophy is, and it comes from Wikipedia. So you can look at this PowerPoint in the content, click that link, and it'll take you to the Wikipedia entry, which is really pretty good overall. There's a whole bunch more uh, about philosophy. And if you, it brings up any questions, let me know. But this is our starting point. Philosophy is the attempt to study and understand these really, really difficult fundamental questions and give good answers to them. One thing you're going to notice really quickly is that in philosophy, we almost never will assume that the answers to these questions about existence, reason, knowledge, values, mind, language, we're never going to just say, oh, well, teach their own, believe what you want to believe, we'll agree to disagree. We're looking for really good right answers to these questions. And those questions can be considered in terms of the disciplines that study them, the branches of philosophy that study them. Classically, there are four main branches. And by classically, I'm sure some of you took a history course or a humanities course. In general, we say anything that comes out of the Western tradition that started in Greece, maybe Rome, but usually Greece, because a whole bunch of what Rome did borrowed from Greece. So it is from a Western perspective, not saying that Eastern perspectives aren't any good, but this class is from a Western perspective. So the four main disciplines historically have been epistemology, study of knowledge, metaphysics, study of reality and existence, logic, which is the study of good versus bad, right versus wrong sorts of thinking, and axiology. Axiology is often broken up into two disciplines, aesthetics and ethics. So let's start with epistemology. Epistemology is the philosophy of knowledge. It's the, as a branch of philosophy, it's the systematized study, examination, research into arguments about knowledge. Epistemologists seek to find out what we know and how we know it. And so they'll be asking questions like, what is truth? What counts as knowledge? What are the criteria for knowledge? What is the difference between knowledge and belief? One really important distinction that we can make right here and now is that philosophy in epistemology, the way that an epistemologist or a philosopher is studying something like knowledge is very, very different than the way someone like a psychologist or a neuroscientist would. They will borrow from each other. Philosophers will borrow from everybody, but they are different disciplines. And I bring this up because a lot of people are confused. And recently, especially in the last three to five years, people have thought that philosophy was a branch of psychology. It is not. Psychologists would be wanting to study a human brain or behavior, the human mind, to say, what is it that people think they know? Why do they think they know it? How did they come to believe they knew that? Philosophers are going to want to say, what actually counts as knowledge, whether or not person A, B, or C ever believes it? What should we consider adequate justification for our beliefs? 
What is actually true? Is there something out there that's actually true? Are statements actually true? And what makes those statements true? Whether someone believes them, whether they're a part of someone's psychological condition or not. So epistemology is the study of knowledge and it seeks to figure out what do we know? How do we know it? What really counts as truth? What counts as justification? What are beliefs? We're going to get into all of that a little tiny bit because in order to know stuff about ethics, we need to know what our criteria are for knowledge. Metaphysics, reality and existence. What exists? What's real? A lot of times I'll have students who think of metaphysics as like the beyond physics. It must be spiritual. There's like a metaphysics section at the bookstore that includes crystals and I don't know what else. That's not philosophical metaphysics. Philosophically, when we're studying metaphysics, we're looking at what are the underlying rules, regulations, principles, and ideas, the foundational fundamental stuff regarding reality and existence. So they will seek to find out what is real, what's not real. And there will be a whole host of questions we can ask. What exists? How do we know it exists? Which would be an epistemological question a little bit. Oh. Excuse me. I sneeze like a hurricane. I apologize for that, but I'm not editing it out because we're not that concerned about being that professional. And I'm a human being who sneezes. Accept me as I am. Don't accept me as I am if I'm lame, by the way. Accept me as I am for sneezing. Everybody sneezes. Is there a difference between physical and non-physical things? Do non-physical things exist? If I say to you, picture a unicorn right now, you're picturing a unicorn. Does that unicorn exist? Where? What's it made of? The idea you have right now, whether it's about the unicorn or you're thinking, what is this crazy dude thinking? What did I get myself into? He just sneezed and didn't edit it out. What the hell's happening here? Where do those ideas take place? Are they real? What are they made of? What is the fundamental stuff of the world? We know physics will tell us Break it down into atoms, then subatomic particles, right? We'll get all the way down to like quarks and super tiny, tiny things. There's probably tinier stuff than that. I'm not an expert in physics, nor will I pretend to be. But what are those things? Physical substance. Do mental substances exist? You want a rad, really rad metaphysics question that will is going to blow your mind right now? What are ghosts made of? No, really, what are ghosts made of? Don't say like, ah, they're made of something ectoplasmic and electromagnetic. You, we don't even know what that... If a ghost's made of something, how does it exist after someone's dead? Is it their soul? Interesting metaphysical questions. So metaphysics is asking those questions about all things, not just ghosts. I throw that in there because it's one that I'll come back to a bunch of times. Just because people have really inconsistent beliefs about what a ghost might be. So... Epistemology and metaphysics, we've covered two of the branches. Metaphysics will touch on ethics, or we will touch on metaphysics and ethics, because we want to know what is the metaphysics of morality, of ethics? Do right and wrong exist in the world? If they are out there in the world, why can't I catch them in a butterfly net? Why can't I go out and grab them? They aren't physical things. What are they, if they exist at all? Third branch, and one that's going to be super duper important for this class, logic, which is the philosophical study of good versus bad thinking. It's going to have to do with reason, and we'll talk more about that very shortly, about what reason is when we're talking about it in terms of philosophy. What does it mean to reason well or think well? Those are the questions that logic is going to ask. It wants to provide logic, philosophical logic is going to provide us with some objective criteria, or at least claim to or try to, and we'll see this argument within two weeks. Objective criteria by which we can distinguish good reasons from for particular beliefs from bad reasons for beliefs. So logic is going to tell us, hey, all of those arguments people give or reasons people give to be on one side or the other in like a political argument or something, it gives us criteria to objectively say that argument is better than that argument. We have better reason to believe that person and their beliefs than this person and their beliefs. That's pretty rad. 
And since a lot of ethical questions, questions of right and wrong, end up being really contentious and people want to fight about them and people disagree, it's going to be super useful when we're examining questions of right and wrong. So logic, questions we're going to ask. What are good reasons for belief? What do they look like? What, if anything, makes some reasons better than other reasons? What are the objective criteria by which we can judge competing arguments or competing collections of belief? Logic's going to give us some criteria or rules to give us a chance at doing some of that. Those are the questions that I'll, logic would be focusing on a lot of the time. And last but not least, certainly not least, most important for us probably, axiology. Almost no one even talks about axiology or thinks of it in these terms anymore because axiology is just the philosophy of value. It includes two main disciplines, branches, aesthetics and ethics. Aesthetics is the philosophy of the value of beauty. Now, don't think of it in terms of beauty as like, oh, she's pretty or, oh, he's gorgeous or whatever. It's not just that. It's what's the value of seeing a sunset on a going on a hike? The, what's the value or the beauty involved in looking at a cute baby? Why is it beautiful? Is there something beautiful about watching a gazillion cat videos? Or cute baby videos? Or looking at toe beans on TikTok? Are those things beautiful? What makes them beautiful? And it, if it, they are genuinely beautiful and not just social constructions or whatever else, what is it about them that makes them valuable in that way? We're not going to talk too much about that, but we are going to talk a hell of a lot about ethics, which seeks to identify what is morally valuable. 99% of ethical theories, and we'll talk more about what those are, are going to try to figure out what makes a particular action or behavior or belief morally valuable. What makes it right or wrong? And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that right now, because that's the course we're going to be taking, and we need to have a slightly better understanding for now of what ethics is. Two questions in ethics that are primarily the focus of what we're going to be looking at. And these I really want you to remember, and I'll tell you right now, they will come up, show up on future quizzes, they'll show up in a future folio maybe, might show up in a future discussion. I want you to get in your mind that ethics as we're thinking of it, is really trying to answer two questions. One, what makes for a good life? Not a life that I like or that would make me happy because that might be a horrible thing for everybody else or a horrible thing in general. So we need to understand what good is. What does good mean? Are there objective criteria for good? And what is the right thing to do? In a certain circumstance, Given the context, will it matter what I do or don't do? Should I do something or should I not do something? What makes an action praiseworthy? What makes it so that we ought to tell someone, good job for what you did, you're a good person, you're doing the right thing, for telling the truth or being kind or returning the wallet they found on the ground? And what makes something blameworthy? What makes it so that someone ought to be, not that they ended up being blamed for something, but that they should be blamed for it, whether anybody catches them or not. It's a distinction I'll throw in here right now that people confuse, and it's going to be kind of important when we talk about ethics. There's a big distinction between saying someone was responsible for something and that they've been held accountable for it. Responsibility means they're to blame, they were at fault, or they're to be praised. They did the right thing, and it was caused by them. If a baby falls out of a third-story window, and I catch them and save the baby's life, I was responsible for that baby's life being saved, because but for me, they would have fallen and died. Now, being held accountable for your actions means, hey, people noticed Chad did it and gave him a round of applause. Or people noticed Chad did it, and the baby happened to be that creepy doll from the movie where it's like a creepy doll that comes alive, that's AI, and is going to start killing people for the girl, or it's the Chucky doll. And then people will be like, dude, you should have let him die. Should have let that doll hit the ground. Interesting question. I don't, I'm not a huge horror movie person, so I don't think I've seen any of them. Why doesn't someone just pick Chucky up and yeet him out the window? He's like this big. I guess if he's magical, he can have magical super strength powers or something. 
So responsibility and accountability, two different things. I introduced that because a lot of people want to answer ethics questions based upon whether or not someone praises them or blames them, whether they're actually rewarded or not rewarded for what they do. And almost none of the ways we're going to talk about ethics really care about that. Because if you save the baby, you save the baby, whether no one noticed or not. And it will likely be the right thing to do, unless that baby's a Chucky doll. And it will likely be something that leads to a better life for you or the baby, whether anybody notices or praises you for it. We're going to explore all of these questions in greater detail, but I wanted people to have an idea of what we're doing. So philosophy has nothing to do with having like a black beret and a black turtleneck and smoking clove cigarettes and being angsty. It has to do with one, the study of fundamental questions regarding our being humans in the universe. What exists? What do we know? What's right and wrong? And how do we determine good reasons from bad reasons? Those are captured by these four main fields, epistemology, the philosophy of knowledge, metaphysics, the philosophy of reality and existence, logic, which is going to be the study of good thinking from bad thinking, good relationships between idea and bad relationships between ideas, axiology, which includes ethics, being the study of value, and ethics in particular being the study of moral value, asking questions about what it means to have a good life and what is the difference between right and wrong. And that's all I got for you. So I hope that was a quick introduction, gives you a general idea of what we're uh, going to be talking about. You do not have to have a perfect understanding of all of the things and all of the consequences of everything I just said, but hopefully it starts a conversation. Please, as always, send me an email if you have a question, hit up a discussion board, whatever's the key, most convenient way, and we'll go from there. Uh, I look forward to next time. It'll be a little bit more ethics for you.